Okay. Right. Thank you very much, everyone, joining us today. Um, this is uh, a THM uh, seminar organized by Bilkent University uh, with the Alliance uh, Institute for Bocuse. Uh, today, we are with a general manager. I'd like to introduce him to you uh, before uh, we start our informal talk uh, so that he can share his experiences with you. Uh, by the way, uh, for the uh, Bilkent students uh, who are going to have their uh, GE uh, 250251 courses, uh, you have already started to write your uh, IDs and uh, names. Thank you very much. Go on, please, with that. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Alper uh, is an award-winning general manager. <laughs> Let me start. It is a good start. Thank you very much. You made my day. <laughs> <laughs> Among the awards he received was the General Manager of the Year, uh, year 2014 Award of the Wyndham Hotel Group, while he was the Cluster General Manager for Ramada Plaza Jumeirah Beach, Dubai, and Ramada Sarja Hotel and Suites. Uh, he also received two other awards, but this time, this is for the hotels he managed, the Hotel of the Year Year 2017 award for the San Regis Istanbul, luxury Marriott brands in Europe, among the European hotels uh, of the Marriott group, and then the Hotel of the Year Year 2013 uh, for the Wyndham Grand Istanbul Kalamish Marina Hotel. He has more than 35 years of experience in the hospitality industry and worked at prestigious hotels with impressive success tracks and turnarounds in rapid changing environments in Turkey and abroad. He has expertise in revenue management, brand development and strategic planning and many more. He is customer focused and performance driven with strong leadership skills. He started his career in 1991 as a receptionist in Park Hilton, Istanbul, and has been a general manager since year 2015. During his career, he worked in many countries, including United Arab Emirates, Italy, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Bahrain, and Turkey, San Clement uh, Palace, Kempinski, Venice, Ramada Plaza, Jumeirah Beach, Dubai, Ramada Sharjah Hotel and Suites, the Marmara Taksim, Istanbul, Intercontinental Almaty and JW Marriott uh, Absheron Baku can be listed among the hotels for which he was the general manager. He is currently the multi property general manager of Ankara Sheraton Hotel and Conference Center and Lugal, a luxury collection hotel of the Marriott International chain. He recently published a book titled Hotelier to tell about his experiences in the industry and inspire young professionals. Yes, I, I, the floor is yours. Thank you very much uh, for joining us today for your time. Thank you, Eda, for the nice introduction. I really impressed myself. <laughs> I didn't notice that it has been a really long time. Um, as you mentioned that uh, I started, to be honest, um, everybody is asking how old I am because when you say 35 years, actually it became 37. And then I started on when I was 15 years old. So I am 52 at this moment because everybody is asking. So if you have been experienced for 37 years, how old are you? You know, that was the first question I always received. So um, I, I'm from the vocational school yeah, in Istanbul, Etiler, Hotel Management Vocational School. And in the same time, I, in, when I started the high school, you know that in the first year, the training starts for us. So I started as a trainee and I never stopped. So that's why since I'm 15, I have been working in this industry without any interruption. So with the basic calculation, it has been already 37 years, yeah? Wonderful. And you, you became a general manager in 2005, not in 2015, in oh, 2005. 2005. So I started in 1985 as a trainee and 2005, I became the general manager. So it was, it took me 20 years to become a GM, yeah? How old were you at the time? I was 35. 
35, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so uh, I started in the food and beverage department as a trainee, as a bus boy for six months. I can tell you that for during the six months, I have never seen a plate full. I was in charge of only collecting empty <laughs> plates from the, the rooms because I worked at the room service. It was in Istanbul Sheraton Hotel, which is currently uh, intercontinental now. Mm -hmm. So it was amazing six months. Then after the I finished the high school, I joined the Hajit Pay University in Ankara. It was the hotel management department as well, like the, all our students, I think it's from the hotel management, yeah, the, from off the Bill Kent University, I guess, yeah. Actually, there are some other students from different departments. Excellent. I like to inspire them as well uh, about the, you know, industry and this is a good career option. I'd like mm -hmm. to inspire them. Let's see. <laughs> cool. So let, let's see if we can make, if we can inspire them, yeah? Yes. So when I came to university, to Ankara, on, by that, on that time, there was no inter, uh, international chain like Hilton and Sheraton, like Wyndham, yeah? The only uh, international hotel was Etap Altinel, which was part of the Accor group. And then I started as a training in the reservation department during my university. As soon as I graduated, I moved back to Istanbul. Then my official career started as a full-time employee, yeah? And I work in a different positions like receptionist, folio typist. Many of you guys don't know what does folio typist means because by then there was no opera, there was no Fidelio and I started to work with everything with the manually, yeah? So we were preparing the folios of the guest by in the typewriting machine, yeah? So I started as a type folio typist. And then of course it took time. Then I became receptionist, senior receptionist, night receptionist, you know, lots of steps <clears throat> in the front office. Then I moved to sales. And because I always wanted to be on stage, always wanted to be in the interaction, engage with the hotel guests, yeah? So that's why I want to move to the sales in order to sell the property I'm working with. Then I, after 10 years of sales, Sorry. So after 10 years of the sales in a different positions like sales representative, sales manager, regional sales manager, uh, I shifted to the revenue management. I'm just giving some headlines and we will discuss later in details if anybody wants to know in more in details, yeah? And I moved to the revenue management. So it was the most interesting period because in that, in that time, the revenue management was new for globally for everybody. So everybody was thinking that I am the finance manager when I told them I'm the revenue manager. Actually, what I was doing, it was like a strategic planning in order to find the best available rate for the best time for the best customer. When I explained this to the team, everybody was thinking that I'm coming from the moon, I'm talking from something that nobody was experienced. So it was a good experience. When I became general manager in 2005, yeah, I was already had a background in revenue management, in front office, and as well as sales and marketing, which really helped me a lot, yeah. The most important thing what I have done in my career that I, when I was 27 years old, I decided to get international experiences, yeah? Because I was always thinking that seeing different cultures, seeing different countries, different environments, well, will help me to grow for my vision. And also being international, really, I was thinking that to help me to grow in my career, which was the case when you look at on my background, yeah? So when I was 27 years old, I moved to my first international destination, which was Kazakhstan. And I became the director of sales and marketing of the Intercontinental Almaty. So it was my first 
international experiences and it really was a big challenge on that period you know you are just 27 years old you are moving out from your country not to visit to leave and the climate was very different in some nights during winter it goes down to negative 35 40 degrees yeah but really i enjoyed a lot yeah because you meet with different people different cultures and then after three years i moved to azerbaijan to open the park hayat in azerbaijan baku as a director of rooms then it continue on a different countries, which we will discuss maybe in later. Always what I was thinking that one day I will share my experiences with the young generations, with the future hoteliers. You know why? Because during our period, we always wanted to talk with the hoteliers, but it was not easy to be honest. First, we did not have too many hotels as today, and we did not have too many hoteliers, experienced hoteliers, and many of the hotel general managers, food and beverage directors, rooms directors, they were all expat, yeah? They were not Turkish. So it was not easy for us to reach them, to talk to them. I, I was thinking that, you know, I will, one day I will, all my experiences and I wanted to write a book if it happens. So what I did, every single good or bad or funny thing that I experienced, I write it on a small paper, I put it in a big box and I throw these small notes into the box by thinking that one day I will put them together, yeah? And believe me, this box travel with me all around the world, wherever I go, work yeah but of course time to time i used to open the box to read the things in order to remember because if you don't look at it when the day comes you might forget yeah then after some times i started to record them to the small cassettes many of them maybe you do not know but there was a small recording machines with the small tape inside you know that I am 52, so I, I experience all the other technologies as well. So uh, I recorded all of them. And then um, by thinking that one day, really, I will put them together. And I almost write 200, 250 small papers to put them together. When I was in Baku as a general manager of the JW Marriott in Baku, this pandemic hit here in 2022 in March in Azerbaijan, like same as in Turkey. But the rules and was very strict and we were not allowed to go out. Only we were allowed to go out two hours every day by sending an SMS only for the pharmacy and the supermarkets, yeah? And unfortunately we kept our hotel almost nine to 10 months closed, yeah? That was the time. I decided to put all of these uh, memories, experiences together. And I asked one of my friends who is editing the books to help me on that, yeah? So that's why in 2020, in 10th of October, 10-10, 2020, it was interesting day, we started to work together with him to prepare this book. So this year, Unfortunately, it, it, we couldn't print earlier because of this pandemic and economical situation. This year in February, I released my first book, which is the Hotelgy. And you can see that it made the second edition as well. And I came to know that we are going to the, we will have the third one as well. So it is, I think, good selling. So I put all my experiences together in order to share with the future hoteliers, with the young generations like you guys, because the, the things that we have experienced was completely different than what are, what are you experiencing today? Because the technology was not as developed as today. 
For example, I will give you one sample. Today, I think in one of my interviews, I mentioned that still the biggest challenge is the foreign language, yeah? When I started in 1995, 97, on these years, the English was the biggest challenge for us that we couldn't hire a person who speaks fluent English. But today, in 2022, guys, unfortunately, it is still the case that it is not easy to hire a person who speaks fluently English. You are lucky that your school is in English, but there are lots of people, lots of universities still struggling and of with this problem. And you know that for our industry, how important is the English. When I applied in one of the international hotels as a management trainee, like 25 years ago, they asked me what languages I speak, yeah? And I told them I speak English and she told me that, you know what? Everybody speaks English. I ask you what else you are speaking. Can you imagine? They are not expecting us to speak only English. They want to, they are expecting us to speak even the second language. But today it is the still issue for us that we are still traveling with this English language, yeah? So in my book, what I told the young generation that, you know what, today the learning English is much easier than the previous years. I remember I went to school, uh, English language school for 15 months, nonstop, every day after office work, during week, yeah? in order to learn English. Today, it is very easy. In your phones, there are lots of applications. You can download, and if you learn every day five, 10 words, and if you remember only 50% of them, still you will have a big advantage from the other candidates that in the future when you apply for a job, yeah? Edanum, I am not sure if you have the second language option in Bilkent University. I hope you do, because this is what we really need today. We do, yes, we do. Our students take uh, a second foreign language. There are uh, actually five second foreign languages. So they can start with one language and they can take uh, five uh, levels, uh, mm -hmm. the same language, or they can change. Cool. So actually, many of you, while you are coming to the graduation, you already speak English because I interviewed last year many of your uh, students who graduated. You remember? Yes. Some of them be hired. Some of them had a training in our hotels. Our doors are open to all of you guys. But the English is a must for every department in the hotel. I have only 15% of my guests Turkish. And all our guests, because by being in a, one of the best hotel in Ankara, we have lots of international delegations. We are hosting presidents, we are hosting ministers. And having an English, it is so normal, not a plus anymore. It is so that's why. <laughs> it's like our Sorry? Minute. It it's is like a common, this is minimum we expect from the candidates speaking English and second language is, is a plus, but it was not the case before. So what I mean is the world is growing and changing very fast. So the rules, the requirements of the positions keeps changing. So if any of you has a problem with the language, I think you need to start focus on fixing it because you will be the most um, required qualification will be the English when you really graduated. I, after that, I think we will have enough time Edda, if somebody has the questions that we can yeah. ask, yeah? Uh, that's uh, very good. You reminded me, Alper, thank you so much. 
uh, dear students. How much time we have? Is it one hour? Students, you can ask your questions anytime you like. Just uh, type your question in the chat or you can unmute yourselves and, uh, you know, by taking um, uh, a word, uh, you can ask your questions. Uh, we have the time that you have, uh, Alpay. Generally, our, uh, you know, talks are around an hour, including the questions. Uh, okay. Uh, depending on your time, we can, uh, we can do it as much as you like. Okay. So the uh, most important thing that I spent I focus on my career, just that I want it to be international, yeah? I highly recommend you guys, try to work in the international companies like Marriott, like Hilton, like Wyndham, you know, because we are giving an opportunity. After some times when you work with us, you will have an opportunities to get transfer internationally, and you will have a chance to work with the people that really help you to grow. So in our hotel, for example, yesterday we had a farewell for one of our colleagues who flew to Los Angeles. We, last week we had a, another farewell for one of our front office team member to work for the Rich Carlton in Bahrain, for example. So if you are good in your job, if you are, um, how I can say, good enough, well educated, if you focus on your job, and if you are really, really want to be an international, there are, there's a big opportunities today with the international companies that you get transferred. For example, I would never, never dream or imagine that I will work as a general manager in Kempinski in Venice, in San Clemente Palace, for example. You know, these, there are some rules and regulations for every different country that you need to tick the boxes, yeah? So that's why if you dream it, if you believe it, if you work, if you invest to yourself, you can make it happen. The only thing is you need to be really Believe in yourself because everything starts with you and everything continues with you. If you are expecting somebody to help you, then you will wait forever, yeah? When you are ready, when you are good in your job, we recognize the people and we give the career opportunities for all our team members. But always, as I mentioned that, you need to be really international, ready, dynamic, ready to move, you know, ready to take challenges. These are the really the criteria that we are looking for. For example, now in Qatar, if you know that there's a World Cup end of this year, yeah? They are requiring 4,000 additional people only from our company, from Marriott, to be located in Qatar at least for three months, yeah? It is a big opportunity. Now, I will assign some of my team members from every department to send them in the last quarter to Qatar to assist to the hotels. And can you imagine the experience they will get? So it is a big opportunity. But the thing is, if you, if you are not ready for these thing, kind of things, we can never put your name on the list, yeah? So that's why please invest yourself. Many of the people, when I interview uh, the young hoteliers like you, when they graduated, they asked me the question, when they can be the manager? Nobody wants to take the position less than manager. This is the new trend at, uh, lately. You know, but I always tell them, it took it me not, time. Alper, it is not new. <laughs> it's been <laughs> like this forever and it's going to be. <laughs> but the thing is, being manager, actually, it is too easy. Huh? I can hire you as a manager. I can give you the position, desk and everything. But you know what is important? It depends on you. How long you can perform in this 
position. So being a manager is so easy. I can do that, but it is, again, I, I, as I mentioned that it starts with you and it's continue with you. It is you to decide how long you can hold this position. Because believe me today, being a manager is not <laughs> as easy maybe as before or as you think, because it requires lots of experiences. It is not only the knowledge, the things comes with an experience, guys. because the real life is different than what we learned from the books in the school. The schools are telling you the best basics, the theoric information, but the experience, that's why we have these trainings. That's why the experience comes with time. And without experience, being a manager is not healthy. I'm, so, so that's why I want to have some questions because really some of my team members, they told me that please check during this session, mm -hmm. how many of them wants to be a manager as soon as they uh, graduated from the school. Okay, uh, guys, would you like to uh, go for it? Uh, if you uh, like to raise your hands, let's see how many of you are dreaming to be a manager. By the way, in um, the group, uh, there mm. are students from different departments. Mm -hmm. In Chant, um, we have uh, internship in all departments. Uh, Excellent. They, uh, in the in the summer. So, for instance, if, if there are any of you who are willing to work and experience in a hotel, uh, Alper is here. You can uh, send uh, your CVs to him uh, to do internship, uh, part of your education or part of, uh, you know, uh, just as, as an extra. This uh, internship is very important. You know why, guys? Because we will be able to see you. Mm -hmm. If we, you. if you like us, and if we like, if there's a gel between us, exactly, and then the jobs are ready. Even if it is not here, maybe my second hotel, Lugal. If Lugal is not here, JW Marriott. So, you know, we are always talking to each other because we really want to keep good apples. Mm -hmm. So, training is a big opportunity to all of you mm -hmm. to. Be recognized, yeah. And experience, yes. And actually, nowadays, you know, it is difficult to find a job. So internships are here. Uh, they are like long-term uh, interviews. Instead of interviewing somebody uh, with a couple of uh, questions in a couple of minutes, you employ them as interns, and you, in a way, interview them for a month, two months, three months, and then see whether they are the right candidate for the available positions you have. And also there is an opportunity, for example, we hired one uh, newly um, starting, you know, it's an, she just graduated from the school. She had a break for one year and we hired her as a food and beverage uh, team member. But we noticed that she can be a good fit in the guest relation, which we made the internal transfer so as of next month, she will be work as a guest relation officer, yeah? So it is, you know, sometimes you think that you are the best, you can, you best match for the receptionist role, but while we are working together, we are helping you to develop and to find what will be your best uh, position in the hotel as well. And it is easy to shift between the departments. Also, you know, it, but as I mentioned that, you know, just don't demand to be a manager as soon as you have your diploma. <laughs> so who wants to ask a question and then we can discuss more about experiences. What are you thinking? Let's share with the group. Yes. Anyone with a question? Do you all have a, a goal set in mind? We have a goal and going after it. 
So I am sure there are lots of people wants to talk, but everybody is expecting for somebody to start first, I guess, yeah? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I, I have seen some THM students, tourism and hotel management students. Uh, is there a question from a THM student, for instance? Shall we start with THMs, maybe? <laughs> so can you read the chat box, Eda, because I can't Ah, all right. There is, there is one. How come? Okay. Uh, first and foremost, thank you for sharing your knowledge experiences of the decades with us. Which hotel assignment was the most challenging for you? What was the challenge and how did you come over the challenge? Warm regards, Hakan Özel. All right. Hakan. Thank you, Hakan. <laughs> thank you, Hakan. Um, the first, the most challenging one, of course, it was my first international assignment. So, because you shift your environment, you change your working style because every country and every nation has their own rules and regulations. And then I, I can say that the most important, difficult one was the one when I was in Kazakhstan in Almaty, first time when I traveled. So what I did, um, first I tried to understand what is the culture? What is the working behaviors of the people? The most important thing, what is the most important thing to communicate properly? Because there is a language barrier regardless, even if you go to Kazakhstan or even if you go to Italy or even if you go to Arab Emirates, always there is a language barrier because English is none of our native language, yeah? So that's why first, I try to find out how I can communicate properly. Because I always believe if you want to be understood by others, first you need to understand them. So it helped me to improve my communication skills. And also the working environment is very different. So the, what I can say that what I have uh, most focused when I have a different assignment, adaptability to the environment that I am working, yeah? Without changing my values, of course, every person has their values, leaves the way of working, but you need to be flexible and you need to be easy to adapt to the environment where you are in. So that was the most challenging, the first, challenging assignment. And this is the way how I try to fix, to make my life easier. Thank you so much, uh, Alpay. Any other question? Hakan, by the way, uh, hmm. are you our graduate Hakan? <laughs> is it uh, just, you know, uh, name? A similar name for Hakan Özel is a uh, is a graduate of, of us, and he is the GM of Shangri La Hotel Dubai. Oh, really? It yes. is one of my favorite yes. hotel in Dubai. All right, Hakan, are are you <laughs> are you Hakan Özel, the GM of uh, Shangri La, or is just a similar name? And so Yok hocam benim merhaba nasılsınız? Oh, wonderful Hakan. It's great to, to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very Hi, much. Hi Hakan. Hi Alper. I would like to thank you very much for sharing your really very incredible um history, incredible yeah? The next More session less. should be with you. Thank Hopefully. you. Uh, yes, Hopefully. Yes, Hakan, we'll so. we should do it together. Absolutely. I would like to congratulate Alper very much. And I am also following Alper quite often from LinkedIn. Uh, his amazing um, engagement with his colleagues hotel. And I'm sure it's going to be a perfect experience for Ankara. Congratulations, Alper. And thank you, yeah, Alper. Excellent to follow you. Thank you. We are, we are one big family, Hakan. As you, I'm sure you have one big family in Dubai as well. And your hotel is one of my favorite hotel in Dubai. I love, I love this hotel. And then um, it is good to see that you see guys, I worked internationally. Now Hakan works internationally. Yes. So 
there are lots of opportunities for us internationally and Hakan is also very good ambassador of the Turkish hoteliers internationally. And then, as I mentioned during my uh, talk before, if you are good, there is an opportunity, but it was not the case before, guys. 30 years ago, I could never imagine or dream to work internationally, even as a general manager. It was more challenging. I am sure Hakan had a similar challenges that I had, but now the life is easier. So that's why, guys, there is a big opportunity in the hotel industry to be an international hotelier. An international carrier and have an international carrier. Wonderful. Mert uh, Yunus Dranaz is with us. Actually, he is a new graduate of us. He says, first of all, thank you for this organization. How long do you think we should work from the starting positions? Uh, for example, how long did you work as a receptionist? What were the most important things you thought about uh, before taking new steps in your career? Uh, Mert Dranas from Shertinanka as a receptionist. Country. Hi, hi, Mert. <laughs> I didn't see you today. I think you are off today. <laughs> yes, Ms. Yes, Alfarba is my off day today. And I just yes. waiting for your organization today. Very Thank nice. you, Mert, for joining. Thank you, uh, Mert uh, is one of our really, really favorite team members and he's very hard worker. Okay. And then um, it took me, uh, I think two years to become a uh, front office supervisor. And I was in Istanbul Hilton, Parks the Hilton. It took me two years. So, you know, but the, as I mentioned, the conditions were different, Mert. So, you know, the hotel, we have lots of opportunities in the hotel and then we are really looking forward to you guys to grow with us together because I really want to see you guys in um, better positions, in better conditions and we will proud of you. We, please make us proud with you and we will help you to do this. Yes, we will try to make everything <laughs> to be proud of together. Matt, you remember one of your colleagues? We just got transferred to Ritz Carlton, Bahrain. Yes, yes, I know. Orkun yes. went to the Bahrain and now he's very happy. You see? Yes. And yesterday we sent Yunus Emre, one of our uh, food and beverage team members, to Los Angeles. Yes. And then, you know, there are lots of opportunities. And also, we have lots of uh, transfers to Istanbul, to Izmir to boardroom hotels, it, it, some of the, uh, it is not always the case that everybody wants to get transferred internationally. Also in Turkey, we have lots of opportunities and the doors are open for all of you guys. All right, thank you so much. Uh, Özgür is with us, he is also a new graduate. Uh, Özgür, I think you're going to go to the Broadmoor in the United States, right? I'm uh, going to read your question. My question is to Alper that uh, what does he think separated him from the others around him along the journey that made him a GM? My journey? During your journey, what made mm -hmm. you different? What do you think? You were different than the others around you so that you became a GM? I don't know. The others became okay. Mm -hmm. I had some when I started, you know, for every position. When I took over a hotel, I always promised and I always believed that the property should be always better than I took over. That was always my aim. So when I complete my two years, three years, four years, whatever is my assignment. When I hand over the hotel, it must be on better financial or physical, you know, in many aspects, it should be much better than, than I took over. So sometimes it is challenging because when you take over a palace like in Venice, it was already one of the best hotel in Venice. Of course, the target is so high because it is not easy to 
in some cases make it better, yeah? But still, I try to find a way, whatever is the weakest point of the property in order to focus and make it better. I always wanted to create some difference that the people talk later after I left the property. You know what? These things has been done during Alper's time. So that's why I always wanted to hand over better hotels than I took over. All right. Very good. Uh, by the way, Özgür is uh, written again. So he's going to the Ritz Carlton Atlanta. Okay, you changed your mind. You're not going to the Broadmoor. We have um, agreements with AHA. Uh, mm -hmm. our Hotel Association. Yes, uh, our students uh, can go to the United States with a J-1 visa after their mm -hmm. graduation for a year. And they uh, can choose among some properties. So it seems Özgür is going to go to the Ritz Carlton Atlanta, uh, is which is one of one of the best Ritz Carlton. And then because I worked in US, I worked in Ritz Carlton, Washington DC, Pentagon City, and then uh, Ritz Carlton Atlanta. I know that it is one of the best. So okay. good luck and uh, please be <laughs> please be one of our best Turkish hotelier ambassador in the hotel. Very nice. Özgür, when are you going to go? Uh, you can type. Uh, I think uh, you're going to go soon. All right. Uh, any other questions? What about ladies in the uh, mm -hmm. industry, Alper? Uh, our graduates, uh, I mean, the girls, started to become GMs. Yes, we have newly appointed female luxury GM in Turkey, which is Ella. She mm -hmm. is the general manager of Ritz Carlton Istanbul. And with this property, the number two to hotel manager is female as well. And 80% of the executive committee who runs the hotel are female. Mm -hmm. So you see, it is, there is a, there's no difference guys, you know? Only the thing that if you really want to be, Hi. you can make it happen. Yeah. And we are very proud with Ella because she was the director of sales of the hotel. And then she became really, she worked hard in operations and lots of um, departments of the hotel. Now she, I think two months ago, newly appointed as the first luxury GM of the company in Ritz Carlton. We have another female GM, which is Sheraton Bursa and Aloft Bursa. The mm -hmm. complex, both hotels, has a female GM, Elin. So she's a there's a way. <laughs> yes, she's she from Bill I know. Yes, yes. And we're proud with her because they are doing excellent job. Really, I'm not just telling them they are my friend, but really, they are doing a great job. Thank you. Uh, what is the most important skill they should have? Alpine. Is it communications? Is it English? Is it what is it? That, but these are but easy to, being an easy to work with is very important. But I mean, um, for example, I prefer to work with the people. Not always comes with the problems. I want to work with the people. Of course, there are lots of problems. And what about the solutions? Mm -hmm. I like the people to come with the solutions, at least try. Mm -hmm. Because when you come to, with the problem to me, when I tell you the solution, you will only copy and paste and do it. But I want you to think how you can fix it. This is the best way to learn. Of course, sometimes we do mistakes, but don't afraid of doing mistakes. Otherwise, we cannot learn. You cannot learn. Because in one of the uh, career days that I joined two weeks ago, yeah, they said, what is your biggest advice to us? I told them, you know what? Don't be afraid of being, uh, making mistakes. The most important, most dangerous thing, if you don't learn from your mistakes, then this is a problem. Repeat. If it repeats. Repeating the problem by not learning from the mistakes is the worst 
enemy that you will have. Mm -hmm. So that is, that's what I say, easy to work with and don't make me scared of mistakes, of having a mistake or doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, what about, uh, nobody is asking questions. I have so many questions. Mm. What about the benefits of being a GM? For instance, do you cook? Do you do cleaning? Do you do laundry? <laughs> <laughs> very, very, do you very tricky question. <laughs> and I don't do any of them because I live in the hotel. Yes. So and during my career, right? You use everything like a guest. Exactly. This is a good thing that of being a GM and live in GM. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So since 2005, I am a GM. So 17 years. Yeah. Out of the 17 years, almost 13, 14 years, I live in the the hotel of course you don't cook uh, you don't do worry about security internet laundry of course these are the benefits mm -hmm. but you know the responsibilities that you have <laughs> on your shoulders <laughs> 24 hours gm <laughs> actually for example simple while you are watching tv if the channel suddenly disappears then you have to start thinking Call engineering, call duty manager. Is it only in my apartment? Or if it is an all hotel, if the people are complaining, see, your evening is the, became suddenly nightmare. It's a so dream. living in the hotel is a 24 hours job. job. Of course, there are lots of benefits and lots of responsibilities in the same time. But you know, um, it is actually my choice to live in the hotel because I believe in that fixing the things on spot rather than fixing problems next day, it is easier. For example, six months ago at five o'clock a.m. in the morning, the telephone rang and the reception was calling. So which is not the common practice. You can understand that there's something wrong going on in the hotel. And they said that in the Sheraton, fire uh, alarms are off, went off, and all the guests was in the room. They came to the lobby at five o'clock. Can you imagine? So it took me, believe me, 30 seconds to change and then go run to the lobby to talk to the guests. There was no fire. The system went off. There was a system error, but it, it can you imagine how scared of the people? Some of them with the babies, some of them, with the mothers or they are, some of them was shaking because how can they know that if there's a fire or not, if the fire alarm saying that, please leave the building by the nearest exit. Yes. So the fixing on the spot by talking to people as a general manager to convince them to go back to the room, assist them, serving coffee, you know, they made them feel very comfortable. And from this, um, thing that I received positive comments saying that the GM was on the floor and talked to the people and made us feel comfortable. You see, otherwise, it would be a lots of complaints next day that this has happened and it might be really asking for refund of the money and lots of things, you know. Sometimes, it, that's why it is my choice to be hands-on and live in the hotel to fix the problems. Hopefully, no problems. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure they are not going to To make sure that the, the things are uh, running in or Check. in a smoothest way. Of course, there are I deserve some benefits not to cook. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, are there any more questions? Do you have questions? If you have questions, you can type. By the way, it is uh, 50 minutes already. Uh, I'd like to ask you another one. I'd like to share, mm. I, I'd like you to share your Nike exam, uh, memory. Uh, sorry, uh, Nike, Nike? Nike, Nike, Nike memories, <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, one day when I was working in Baku, uh, as a director of sales and marketing, I was 
having an email communication with my general manager that he wants me to do something that I really don't, don't want to do it. So he sent me a message, I sent him a message. He sent me a message and back and forth, back and forth. I was really stubborn because I never wanted to do that, whatever he asked for. But he was so nice and he was so professional. I always remember. He sent me an email with the logo of the Nike. You know that, <laughs> yeah, the logo of the Nike. I was like, what is, what is that, does this mean, you know? And, and I sent him a message. And I, sorry, I pick up the phone and I told him, so what is this? He said, Nike, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, boss. So he could pick up the phone. He can say me that, hey, I am the general manager. I want you to do it and just do it. And he, can, he could hang up the phone. No. How he did is the way is very nice. I always remember this. And he was always saying that. It is not important what you say. It is important how you say. It. Mm -hmm. So that's why communication is the most important thing in our industry. Because sometimes you have to say no to client, no to colleagues, no to family. But he was always telling us there are lots of ways to say no without saying no. no. Mm -hmm. So that's why. It is, I always believe that it is important what you say. It is not important what you say, how you say is important. Mm -hmm. And I really always remember this Nike story. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I do remember it as well from the book. You know, it's one of those things I remember. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. What, what would you like to share uh, last with our students? Um, while you are working, you know what I, I always ask to myself? How have you ever thought about how you wanted to be known by other people? You know, because you have an image that the people see you, yeah? Some people say it's a good GM, some people say it's a bad GM, some people say lots of things, yeah? But always think, how do you want to be known by other people? So if you want to be known as a fair GM, or if you want to be known as a good person, so first you need to decide how do you want to be known, then act accordingly, isn't it? This is lately really what I'm thinking a lot nowadays. How do I want to be known in the market, in the colleagues? For example, um, when I, apply for a job and when the people ask for a reference i always tell them you know what you have i'm sure that everybody has a lots of contacts in the hotel industry internationally and turkey pick up the phone and ask what are they thinking about me because the references that i give you will always talk positive about me because i pick them yeah so that's why i always ask them to pick up the phone randomly and check what are they thinking about me? So that's why they made me to think that how I want to be known by other people. So that's why I act accordingly. I'm trying to be open in communication. I'm trying to be fair as much as I can. I'm trying to be uh, easy to talk and easy to reach, open door. I'm not a, uh, gen I'm not a general manager that I sit in my office nine to six and nobody can see me, nobody can. I'm always on the floor, open for a communication to hear comments about the operation. That's why I always set up a tea time call, tea time meetings with my team members. We have monthly get togethers and I talk with the people because I believe in communication is the most important thing. Thank you so much, Alpay. Uh, thank you for your time. And is it already one hour? It is, uh, yes, it is. Uh, I was thinking it's only 15, 20 minutes. So. Uh, <laughs> it's almost an hour. Thank you so much for your time. Um, thank you so much for coming, uh, everyone uh, who participated today uh, and being with us. Thank you so much. Um, I, I don't know what to say, but it's uh, wonderful to know you and you're a great inspiration for young thank people. Thank you. Uh, I 
yeah. and uh, any any time if you have a career days and if you want me to come and meet with the new future uh, young generations you know the future hotelier or the other uh, from the other departments of the school it will be my pleasure to come and meet in person as well thank you so much i find uh, we would be honored uh, thank you very much wonderful this was wonderful so uh, thank you everyone for uh, your participation being with us today um i think uh, we can uh, close the curtains <laughs> thank you guys thank you everybody for sp uh, sparing time to listen and to communicate with me thank you very much guys see you i hope we inspired uh, some some students hopefully there. Hopefully. Hopefully, because this is a big industry and there are so many things uh, to do, especially if they are looking for an international career. Uh, they can do it and they can still do it in other departments while they are studying other subjects because they have internships. Uh, you are I, you know that my brother is from Bilkent as well. Yes, yeah? I know. And he's he the hotelier in Turkey, in yes. Istanbul. Uh -huh. He was one I of the take. students I remember, I take Bucho, uh -huh. the big guy. Big <laughs> guy, yeah. Like, he doesn't look like you. He's My brother, yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> but no. he's very happy with the Bill Kent, yeah. He always talked very positive about Bill Kent and he's one of the most successful hoteliers in Istanbul. In Istanbul, wonderful. We are going to see him as a GM in the near future. Soon, soon, I believe. Soon. Thank you. I Thank you. Have a nice evening, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank bye -bye. you. Thank you. Bye-bye, <laughs> everyone.